Hello everyone, today I want to talk about the buoyancy force, or why when an object is submerged underwater, does it feel lighter or experience an upward force? So this is something that Archimedes noticed, it's called Archimedes principle. So he postulated that the amount of upward force that a submerged object felt is actually equal to the weight of fluid that that object displaces. So here we're actually going to show this using some principles about forces and using the hydrostatic equation that we derived earlier. So to do this, we're going to think about the forces acting on some object uh, that's submerged underwater that we see here. So uh, what are the forces acting on this object? Well, there are a bunch of forces acting on the sides of this object, but they're all equal and they cancel each other out, right? At, at every depth, there is a force on one side and there's a force on the other side and they all cancel each other out. So those aren't the forces that we're interested in. The forces we're interested in are the force that's pushing down on the top of this thing, so force down, uh, and the force that is pushing up on the bottom of this thing, F up, right? And they're both pushing on some area A. I'm gonna do this for this cylindrical object that has this area A, but if you're careful enough, you can do this for any object, not just nicely shaped objects like this. So the key observation to make is that if we think about the distance under the water, what we know is that as you go deeper in the water, there is a greater pressure. And so that pressure acting on an area should make a greater force. And so this is what we're gonna what we're gonna appeal to when we do this. So let's get some uh, actual heights in here. So this is gonna be water level here. This is gonna be the top of the cylinder, and this is gonna be the bottom of the cylinder. And I'm gonna call this H2, which is the height below the surface. And this is H1, which is the height of the actual cylinder. Okay, so let's look at the forces acting on this. We have the buoyant force, which is equal to the force pushing up, which has a positive sign in front of it, minus the force pushing down, which has a negative sign in front of it. In terms of pressures, the force up is equal to the pressure at the bottom of this object. So this is the pressure down here that's acting on the bottom of this thing, right? So let's call that P bottom, times the area that it's acting on, minus the pressure at the top, which is acting down on the top here, P top, which is acting on that same area A, right? I'm just gonna move these over a bit because I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna run out of space. So now, in order to find out what these pressures are, we want to use the hydrostatic equation. One thing that we have to be careful of, we almost forgot it, was that there's actually atmospheric pressure acting on the top of this whole thing. Okay, so let's go and check out. What's the pressure at the bottom? Well, the pressure at the bottom is uh, related to this whole depth below the bottom of the water, right? So the pressure at the bottom is equal to the atmospheric pressure, that's acting on the top, plus the density of the fluid, plus G, plus this total height, which is H1 plus H2. And that's all times that area, right? What's the pressure on the top? The pressure on the top is atmospheric pressure, right? That's still acting up there, plus the density of the fluid times gravity, times the height. And what's the height? Well, it's just this height now. It's just H2 times A. Okay, and we see that a lot of stuff actually cancels out here. We see we have a P atmospheric times an A minus a P atmospheric times an A. So that cancels and that cancels. And we also see that we have a rho G times H2 minus a rho G times H2. So this H2 term cancels as well. And what are we left with? 
Well, we're left with just this little piece. The density of water times G times H1 times A. Okay, well, what is H1 times A? Well, H1 times A is this height times this area. This is the volume of that object. Our buoyant force is equal to the density of the fluid times rho times the volume. And this is a fundamental formula for us. This is the buoyancy formula and what Archimedes came up with so many years ago. I just want to take some time to reinforce two things. One thing is, is the buoyancy force, F net, that's acting on this object, and it acts up, right? It's, there's a plus sign here. It acts up. The buoyancy force depends on the density of the fluid that has been displaced, not the density of the object. Number two, this volume is the volume of the fluid that has been displaced. And in this case, it's the volume of the entire object, but that always isn't the case. And there's a derivation in the notes uh, that shows how to derive the buoyancy force for an object that is floating in the water and is only partially submerged. And you'll see that this volume isn't the volume of the total object, but is actually the volume of the displaced fluid.